Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Hao Yi Chen from Joint Shanto International Eye Center. Today's topic is part two of ocular examination. We will talk about the pupil, ocular motility, and external eye examination with a fresh light and intraocular pressure measurement. The learning objectives are to master the measures of checking pupillary response, ocular motility, and perform an external eye examination. The normal pupil is round, equal in size on both sides. About 2 to 4 mm in diameter and response to light. There are several different pupillary responses. Direct refraction asks the patient to look straight forward. The examiner shine a light to the patient's one eye and observe whether the pupil of that eye constricts. Then take the light away and see whether the pupil dilate. Indirect refraction. Again, ask the patient to look straight forward. The examiner places his or her hand on the patient's nasal bridge to block the light coming from one side and closing to the other. Then shine a light to the patient's eye and check whether the contralateral pupil constricts. Then remove the light source and observe whether the contralateral pupil dilates. Related affluent pupillary defect, RAPD, can be diagnosed by fresh light screening test. After shining a light on one pupil for 2 to 30 seconds, quickly move the light to the opposite pupil for 2 to 3 seconds. Repeat four to five times. If the optic nerve conduction of one side is damaged, both pupils will dilate when the light is shining on the affected side. Correct ocular alignment or ocular posture is the basic of binocular vision, which can provide depth perception. To examine eye posture, shine a light into the eye and evaluate whether the refraction of both cornea are symmetrical. If they are not, there may be strabismus. In some cases, the strabismus may be acute or mild and cannot be identified by cornea refraction. We can use the cover-uncover test and close cover test to unmask it. For the cover and cover test, the examiner cover an eye of the patient with a hand or spatula and look for the movement of the other eye. The cover is then removed and the examiner look at the movement of the previous cover eye. For the close cover test, the clinician cover one eye and move the spatula to the other when moving the specular back and forth, the examiner can look for any subtle movement of the eye. The eye movement examination is to check the motor function of the six pair of extraocular muscles. The doctor uses a target object at 30 to 40 cm from the examiner's eye, then instruct the patient to keep the head still and follow the target with the eyes, generally in the following order. The left, upper left, lower left, right, upper right, and lower right. If there is a restriction of movement in the, a specific direction, it indicates that an eye muscle is dysfunctional and dyspropia may also occur. An external eye examination can be performed with a fresh light. For the eye lift, observe whether there is redness, edema, congestion, ulcer, scar, mass, eyelid margin erosion, eyelid inversion, trichiasis, eyelid etiopia, ptosis, size of eyelid fuchsia, closure, and so on. 
Use a clean finger to feel the eyelid to see whether there is any mess in the upper and lower eyelid. For the lacrimal apparatus, pay attention to whether the lacrimal gland is swollen, whether there is redness, swelling, fistula, and mess in the lacrimal sac. We should also check whether the lacrimal sac is tender on pressure and any outflow from the lacrimal patenta. For the conjunctiva, observe whether there is hyperemia, chemosis, papillary hypertrophia, follicle, scar, hemorrhage, and foreign body. We need to invert the eyelid when checking the palpebral conjunctiva. Checking the scleral for hyperemia, tenderness, nodular, or yellow standing. You can also look at the cornea generally for deformation, laceration, foreign body, ulcer, and so on. Intraocular pressure is an important parameter for diagnosis and monitoring many eye disorders such as glaucoma. The normal range is 10 to 21 mm mercury. There are several methods for IOP measurement. The simplest way is to put both index finger over the patient's closed eyelid. You can estimate whether the intraocular pressure is normal, high or low, but the fingertip test cannot get a quantitative result. The appreciation tonometry such as Goldman tonometry is considered as the gold standard of IOP measurement. There is also rebounded tonometry and shoes tonometry, but all the above mentioned tonometry require contact of the instrument and the eye. There is a non-contact tonometer, which is the most commonly used measure in ophthalmology clinics. The patient sits in front of the non-contact tonometer, put his or her head on the tonometer half frame, and keep his or her eyes widely open, looking straightly ahead. The examiner adjusts the focusing handle, aligns the tonometer pressure head at the cornea of the eye, and instructs the patient to look at the green light. When the cornea is focused, the system automatically sends out a burst of air to flatten the cornea. The intraocular pressure is displayed on the monitor screen. Pupillary response, ocular alignment, intraocular movements, external eye and IOP measurement are all basic and important examinations in ophthalmology. Some of them are not only for eye diseases, but also for neurological and other systemic disorders. Therefore, we all need to master them. These tests can be performed without specific instructions, so you can practice by yourself. Thank you for your attention. Here are some references for further reading.